Chapter 1 Prologue The rain that began before sunrise continued throughout the ceremony. The sides of the two neatly cut graves looked perilously close to collapse from the growing puddles near their edges. The preacher read from his old family Bible and struggled to keep the fragile pages under one of the many black umbrellas. A bright flash marked the third lightning strike since they had arrived at the graveside. He flinched, glanced up with a worried expression, cut the sermon short with a quick, Amen, and closed the Bible for a final prayer. As soon as he had finished, the funeral director stepped forward and indicated that it was time to leave. The small group made their way over the wet grass toward the line of parked cars. Daniel climbed into the waiting limousine with Madison close behind. She turned quickly and reached for the door before Daniel's new foster mother could get in. We'll meet you back at the funeral home. I'd like some private time with my brother. I'm sure you understand. She pulled the door closed before any argument could erupt. Madison locked the door and turned her attention to the limo driver in the front seat. We good? He reached a hand through the window that separated him from the passenger compartment. She slapped a roll of bills into his open palm. After examining them, he caught her eyes in the rearview mirror. Where to, boss? he asked brightly. North, to the state line. There's a bar called The Runaway, you know the one? His eyes, still perfectly framed in the rearview mirror, displayed disapproval. What's the matter? said Madison, anxious to get moving. A bar? You look barely old enough to drive. Oh, you're so sweet, she said with a touch of sarcasm. You've got your story straight? He sighed and put the car in gear. As he pulled out from the line of parked cars, he recited in a monotone, You tased me, dragged me out of the car, and took off. And, she prompted, and I didn't see which way you went. Perfect, she said, and closed the glass divider. Madison pulled off the black scarf and revealed a shock of short pink hair. After combing her fingers through it, she fished around in her large handbag and came up with her usual headdress, a vintage leather aviator helmet. As soon as it was in its proper place, she turned her attention to her brother, how are you, really? Are they treating you okay? He tugged at the sleeve of his coat, trying to cover the bruises on his wrist. Madison noticed and gently took his small hand in hers. I know. Me too. Was it the parents? Or the other kids? Other kids, he said, almost too low to hear above the rain beating against the car and the crunching of the tires on the gravel. The car bounced as it hopped up onto the highway. Well, don't worry. That horse pucky stops today. I have a plan, and it's a brassy ticker. 